I saw this tweet the other day from Cristobal Valenzuela asserting that the future of human interfaces for software would be all natural language and that it is essentially the end of graphical user interfaces. It's such a simple tweet, but it really got me thinking about a lot of things because it's clear to me that many things will change when it comes to our interactions with software and that this change will definitely come from AI-based UIs. And of course, natural language-based UIs are and would continue to be AI-based. But we've also seen a lot of attempts at these like totally natural language user interfaces. We have things like Siri, Google, Alexa, and then we also have like web apps that attempt to do away with things like the navigation bar in exchange for purely natural language UI. Now, at least in my experience, especially for the latter, um, they're just not good. They're cool and unique and nifty and all that, but they are not better, faster to use, and really not even necessarily more intuitive. It's possible. This is just a function of people coming to grips with how to work with new technologies like this and how to like develop software. And like UI is a very advanced and, and mature field and figuring out how to change that to be natural language. It will definitely just take time. But I think in general, natural language is often quite slow. <laughs> One of the first replies that I think I agreed with, at least initially here, was from Rasmus, referencing things like driving cars with voice controls versus manual input through the steering wheel, for example, or gas pedals and all that. But with further thought, he's, you know, he's not wrong about the actual physical driving of cars, and yet with the car example, he kind of is wrong. <laughs> We're looking at this through the lens of interacting with machinery and software that was built to be manually interacted with. Yes, a car was built initially to be manually controlled by humans. So, of course, thinking of this example where you might be steering a car with verbal commands seems very odd and likely that nah, natural language won't be the interface for cars. But I think cars are a really great and obvious example because eventually you almost certainly will not be driving your car. AI will be, physically and metaphorically. <laughs> so your interaction with your car, your interface in this scenario, would be far more high level and managerial. You're going to hop in and say, take me to destination X. You won't be doing the steering. In this way, I think it's very clear natural language UI is a very likely candidate for the future UI of cars. And it's not so much that you would be telling your car verbally to steer left or right all the time because you won't be doing those mundane tasks anymore. <laughs> sure, maybe natural language once in a while would be used for like small minor corrections like this, but it won't be the majority of time. So it's tough to really think about things like this because we're so likely to apply our current way of thinking and seeing and doing things to this future where the things that we see, think, and do are likely to be just different. And then, of course, is depending on how far into the future we want to be thinking here, are we considering the possibilities of things like neural implants and all these other like meshings of machinery into the human body? At this point, things get like super nutty, and I think I'm just going to set that aside for now. <laughs> So the next thing that I think about is the fact that graphical user interfaces, they go both ways. And I think the original kind of tweet by Cristobal here kind of like ignores that or forgets that. Your input is into a graphical representation and the output back to you is a graphical representation. Provided you can manually plus visually do the input you look for without navigating through a bunch of menus and all that, this is often much faster and more intuitive. Um, and, and the same is, is, back, is, is true back to you, where it's going to be far faster than if you received some sort of audio feedback, especially natural language. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words, so to speak, right? And I often find my personal biggest frustration with these more natural language UIs is indeed that information processing, like back to me, it's extremely slow compared to uh, visual, especially if the output is wrong or I wanted something else or something like that. It's like, 
it's super tedious. Even just reading a sentence back is faster than hearing it, but you can display theoretically paragraphs of data in a single image that I can see and understand in nearly an instant. So in this way, I'm not so sure graphical user interfaces are going away. Our eyes are extremely powerful sensors, right? Uh, natural language is just one of many abstractions we have humans have just simply made up. It's not really all that fast, and to be honest, it's quite old technology. <laughs> But again, all of this depends on really not the natural language aspect. It depends on how good is the AI that backs up these applications that we might be interacting with because AI itself is highly likely to abstract away many of the hindrances that we see right now, similarly to the way that natural language um, might replace the car UI and kind of nullify that, well, you wouldn't use a natural language to drive a car argument. Well, you won't be driving the car. <laughs> so along the lines of AI just kind of changing and abstracting away things, I think one of the AIs that is making maybe the largest impact that we've ever seen from AI is GitHub Copilot. It's silently infiltrating all software development and changing the way that we program. I think five years ago, we when we had maybe some autocomplete stuff and maybe even some machine learning attempts for this, you might have been willing to proclaim that there was absolutely no way that you could do software development, even just in the way that we see it today. There was no way that you could do software development without a mouse and keyboard, right? Like, no way beyond a tech demo could you be doing software engineering with natural language, right? And then comes along GitHub Copilot, where today you could write a program by just speaking into the microphone, and it's pretty doable. The hard part would be fixing or changing code that is generated to maybe making small tweaks, stuff like that. But this is just a tedious thing that really just needs to be coded and handled for. This is not, that's not like an unsolved task, especially because we have speech recognition, all this stuff, you would just be able to say in line X, Y, Z, change X to Y, done. Like <laughs> it's doable. It's, it's done. It's a solved problem. So then we have to start to wonder, will we always use a mouse and keyboard for software engineering? Now, I know there will be people who will proclaim that they will always use a mouse and keyboard, just like there will be proclamations. I mean, they're right now, they're hammering away on their keyboard in the comment section about how they'll never use AI like Copilot to program, citing whatever various issues they have with it. Unfortunately, though, you're only here for a short time and times change. <laughs> Will the next generations be using mouse and keyboard? What about the ones after that? I think I'll at least be alive to see software engineering primarily shift away from using mouse and keyboard and kind of see the mouse and keyboard really become relics of the past, like a typewriter or something. I wouldn't necessarily have thought that like a few years ago, but <laughs> After working with Copilot a lot, there's no question in my mind that software engineering will change and move away from human hand coding and typing to a more managerial type of role. Really no different than the tra transition that we're seeing with cars and arguably that we've already seen with programming, right? It's not that it's not really that much different from how has programming changed from say uh, assembly to maybe C++ to Python, right? Like Python is already a very high level programming language. There's so much stuff that's abstracted away. You don't really have to think about. Um, and again, just like all these other things that I've mentioned, like Copilot and all that, there are still the hardliners who are like, oh, I won't ever use that or whatever. Uh, that's not really engineering and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is the world runs with Python and does a lot of development, arguably most or <laughs> I have to be very careful about the word that I use here because there's always going to be people who get angry. But um, I guess, uh, at least in the field of AI, let's say, and many other fields, Python runs the world, okay? And so whether you like are happy about it or not is irrelevant. <laughs> it just is the case that abstraction is, is and always will be king. And the more that we abstract things away, the more progress and the more productivity that we have. So this is just the way things tend to go. And the other thing is GitHub Copilot, I mean, it's really like, it's 
it's one of the first, if not the first. There are there were others like for kind of like uh, machine learning based autocomplete, and sometimes they would do multiple lines. But I, I kind of get the sense that the multiple lines that they were doing was more uh, logic based than AI based. I, I think GitHub Copilot likely is the first true you know, large language model, deep learning, autocomplete slash AI pair programmer. I think this is the first. And that is crazy because it's just the first. What's the 10th one going to be like? What's the 100th one, <laughs> right? What's that one going to be like? And um, and again, I, I kind of see GitHub Copilot, for example, having a harder time than maybe some of the ones of the future because Copilot has to interact with him yes, this like user interface that is quite literally a text editor where people type into the text editor um, and all that. So it has to work around those constraints. But I think that this is the easing into a new transition, a new way of doing software engineering. So getting back to the question about natural language UIs replacing graphical ones, it's kind of possible given the advancement of AI. I'm not sure it's the advancement of natural language processing technologies, though that will definitely power that transition, but it's really just the advancement of AI in general. And it's not that you'll use natural language necessarily to navigate manual-based UIs. It'll be natural language to navigate those AI-based UIs. So the UI itself won't really be the same as the ones that you necessarily use today. And many of the interactions that you have today that you're thinking to yourself, well, how would I do that with, you know, I wouldn't want to do that with natural language. Those will just be abstracted away, as is, has often been the case over time with technology um, and humans' use of that technology. Things have just constantly been abstracted away, similar to the argument I just made about, like, programming. This is just, this is how productivity and advancement works. We just, we build on top of things. So, anyway, it's, you know, it's been a fun thought experiment because like I said in the beginning, it was such a simple tweet. Um, and I'm not really sure I fully agree with it or agree with, cause I, I, I think, I think, I guess like the, the aim is wrong or something where it's not really, it's not about natural language UI and it's not about the going away of a graphical UI. It is just simply the future is a far more intuitive UI most likely, or even maybe the like the this notion of like a static UI where the maybe the navigation menu is always the same or something like that. Um, I think that's going away. But will all UI be natural language based? I don't know. And I definitely think the interface back to you is still largely going to be graphical. But it's definitely been a fun thought experiment either way. I certainly don't personally have all the answers. And I am curious what you think, even if you think, I don't know, Python sucks or whatever. Um, <laughs> I also think it's just fun to think about how much has changed in the last few years, last year, or even just like the last month, like when it comes to AI and what I'm thinking is going to be possible in the coming future. Every single week, it seems like there is a new release, a new update, and we don't have enough time to even consider the impacts and utility of those updates before, guess what? There's another release, another world-changing, massively power tech, powerful technology yet to be leveraged in any way. And it just kind of comes out and then people sort of talk about it and move on. And like, it's just, it's a, it really is a crazy time uh, to be in this field and to be alive, like watching these things happen. Like large language models were massively powerful and cool when they came out and kind of were largely, uh, arguably, other than maybe their size, unchanged up to the point of GitHub Copilot. And But there was like all this kind of dissent about whether or not these models really had any use at all. But working with them and, and like using them, it was so clear this is a massively powerful technology. Do I know how to use it and apply it today to a thing right now? given the current perspective and lens that I view the world from, no, I don't immediately, but, but I can clearly see this is unbelievably powerful technology, you know, and, and it's hard to see how are we actually going to utilize this. And then years later, after the large language model, we have GitHub Copilot. And it's just so obviously and unquestionably a massive productivity amplification <laughs> and a great application of a large language model. 
And again, I know that some of you, or maybe even many of you, as you clutch your mechanical keyboards, will complain that you'll never leave and, and you know, you would never leave behind the tried and true and that you'd never associate yourself with blasphemy like a co-pilot. But I think the field in general will leave that notion behind. It's almost a guarantee because, again, we favor productivity and, and like, advancement. And I, I think as you abstract away, it's just so much easier to be productive in advance. Um, I can't even imagine... Like all the projects that I've ever done, if I had to do them, even just, you know, a rung down into like C++, I would never be where I am today. And so it's like that abstraction. And, and to be clear, I understand like Python is built on top of C++ and C++ powers Python. But that's exact. But that just further bolsters the point that that's why abstraction is so powerful. Right. So so I'm not really sure that's a valid argument against you know, abstraction or the power. It's not like we're leaving old technology behind. We build on top. So anyway, as for natural language being the primary interface, I'm kind of torn here. I think graphical output is still obviously superior to audio output. And even input often is also superior, faster, more intuitive, just easier to use, I, I, I feel like. But if the AI is good enough to where the only input that you put back into the system is like high level stuff or minor corrections, then it is indeed possible that it is the future, right? Um, anyway, let me know your thoughts below. There are certainly many things I haven't considered here, and I'm just interested to hear what others think. It's just such a, like I said, it's a simple topic, but also it's it's curious to think about, especially in the context of even just some of the major changes in the last like year, for example. So um, anyway, that's all for now. Let me know what you think down below and I will see you all next time.